Welcome back friends. In this video, we are gonna talk about how one new tool and a $30 bandsaw blade helped us make an extra $3,000 this month. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. building cutting boards in batches for like mm, the last six months or so now. And we've got a really nice process. It's very repeatable and we're comfortable running all the checklists to build the batches. We've even proven by using my brother, Eric, that somebody who doesn't know woodworking has had not a lot of experience with tools can come in, follow the checklist and build cutting boards correctly. So that just in and of itself is a huge victory for our business. But there's a few things we've noticed about the process that could be improved. And you've seen them too. We've seen your comments and suggestions. So here's the binder full of our procedures and processes. Let me take you through the cutting board process. So we start off with 200 board feet of eight quarter lumber, half of it in cherry, half of it in maple. So step one, chop boards into 18 and a half inch blocks using the miter saw. Joint one face, then joint one edge. Plane the, one the remaining edge for glue up. The Store the strips using on the wall rack. Arrange two clamps, boards for glue up with glue. the rough Board side facing 90 up. degrees. Place boards in storage area to await fulfillment. There are a lot of steps in that process. So one of my jobs in this business is I'm head of production. I gotta make sure that we're making the highest quality product we can before Jenny gets on my case about the fact that it needs to be profitable. Jenny's head of finance and Jenny is also head of sales. So she's breathing down my neck all the time trying to make the boards more profitable, uh, squeeze more efficiency out of the shop. So there's a good tension there between the two of us. And neither one of us should get our way. Because if one of us got our way, then the CEO would be really mad. Who's the CEO? I'm also the CEO, but we got separate, you, you need to wear a lot of hats, different hats when you're running a business. I'll bet your performance report meetings get pretty uh, feisty. <laughs> so we were wondering how much do our boards actually cost us to make? So we sat down and we calculated it all in a big spreadsheet and I'll save you the boredom. Our board cost was pretty high. I mean, with the board packaging and shipping, it cost about $70 per board. And at the time we were selling them for about $100 per board. So that's almost no profit. So I know we always talk about bringing money in versus money out, and you should be more worried about going out and getting more sales and not so worried about the profitability. So as long as you're making profit, go get more sales. Don't spend a ton of time trying to bring your costs down. That's what we normally say. And we did follow that, we did. We kept on going out to get more sales, but we also knew we could make a couple of really easy changes to bring the cost per board down. So looking through the numbers of our board costs, we noticed that we had a lot of material waste and we noticed that our labor costs were really high. And then I realized that both of those things were directly tied to the tools that we use. We love our tools. Our tools have been so great to us, but it was time for an upgrade in a couple of areas. You guys saw the bandsaw video where I almost got hurt because screws were dropping out of the bandsaw. It was just, a, you remember that video. We can't, we're done for today. That's why. These bandsaw blades, I think they're dull. I don't really know what the problem is, but there's screws dropping out of the bandsaw. I don't have, like, look at this. I don't even know where this goes. And also, we were dealing with a lot of issues with our planer. We were asking it to do something beyond what it was designed and built to do. So not only did we have to spend a bunch of time at the planer sending the boards through, the planer wasn't doing such a hot job that we had to put it through the drum sander to fix the problems the planer was causing. So we decided a few months ago, we needed a new bandsaw and we needed a new planer. But we didn't have time to do that much research. I'm out here trying to sell boards. Davis is trying to fulfill the orders. We're both trying to run two businesses here in the background. We didn't have time to comb the interwebs to find the absolute best, perfect tool that was gonna suit our needs 100%. So we hopped into our private Facebook group, The Stud Stack, and we said, what do you guys recommend? We need a bandsaw blade and we need a new planer. Oh my gosh, did they solve this so fast for us. And just within a few minutes of talking to a couple people, we had it figured out. We figured out what tools we needed from people who also run businesses who have the same priorities as we do. So you know all those tool reviews that you see out on the internet? Those are great and they're helpful, 
only if the person's using the tool for the same thing you're using the tool for. And let's be honest, most of those are done by hobbyists, not production shops. But the sud stack is full of people just like us, people trying to make money using the tools to fuel their business. And that's the beauty of joining a community like the stud stack. Your business can grow so much faster than if you were just trying to bootstrap it and do it all on your own. So that's where we got the best suggestions. So the first thing that I wanted to upgrade was the planer. It was time for us to upgrade to a big boy planer. I decided that if we're gonna buy a big planer, I wanted to go as big as I possibly could. And the biggest planer that I could fit in that tiny little garage is a 20 inch Grizzly helical head planer. So I got on the computer and I ordered one. And then I realized they were back ordered for six months. And then we moved on to the bandsaw. So we bought a couple new bandsaw blades. We realized that we didn't need to replace our whole bandsaw. It was just a dull blade that was the problem. And we found an amazing bandsaw blade. The bandsaw blade is called the Wood Slicer from Highland Woodworking. I'll put a link down in the description. And the bandsaw blade is only $30. So we can do an entire batch of boards. By the end of the batch, the bandsaw blade's dull. We take it out, throw it away. Solves every problem. There was not near as much waste. There was no waviness. Everything was dialed in perfect. The bandsaw is the way to go if you're cutting out strips for cutting boards. So I finished up that batch of boards and oh my gosh, they were so thick. Like that batch of boards was ridiculously thick. Each board was almost an inch and a half thick. We only advertise that our boards are a little over an inch thick and they were an inch and a half thick. So we realized that we could cut much thinner strips and that's exactly what we did on the next batch. And about halfway through that batch, we get another email. Thank you for your web order. The following merchandise has shipped. So we finished up that batch of boards with a new planer. Just how much did these tools help us? Jenny's gonna break down the numbers for you. All right, so we're gonna go over the numbers for the cost of a batch of boards with our old tools, and now what it costs for a batch of boards and how much we profit with all the new tools we've incorporated in our process. So it doesn't get confusing, just keep in mind that these numbers are all based off of the same 200 board feet of lumber per batch. All right, so with our old tools and our old procedure, the cost per board was $27.53. That is just the cost of the physical board itself. The packaging cost is $21.03. And that is the box, the paper, the crinkle paper, and the shipping costs. And labor per board was $21.33. Add all that up and you get a total of $69.60 per board. And keep in mind, this batch only made 45 boards. All right, so now let's go over a board batch with our new tools and our new procedures. So now that our tools are helping us waste less material and we can go faster, our new board cost is $19.03. That is a 30.87% decrease in the cost of the boards. Packaging costs stayed the same, nothing changes. And lastly, labor, since we're able to produce them so much faster now, it went down to $12.80 per board. Add all that up and it is $52.06 per board. Which leads to an overall 32.22% decrease in the cost per board. And then keep in mind, the new batch of boards makes 75 boards as opposed to the 45 that it used to make. So with our old process and our old tools, we were able to turn 200 board feet of lumber into $2,480 worth of profit. So with our new tools and our new processes, since we're able to make so many more boards out of that 200 board feet, we're now able to profit $5,410 per batch. So if you notice, that is over double in profit per batch of boards. 
That is insane. I knew that we were gonna speed up with the new tools and the new process, but I did not expect that speed up to make us that much more money per batch. We are quite literally like creating more boards from the waste and what would have just ended up in the dust collector from the old batch. Start before you're ready. There's inefficiencies everywhere in our processes. There always will be, but we're never gonna be able to solve any of them if we don't have the cash flow to buy the tools and get the parts that we need to optimize it. You're gonna have to start dirty and just improve over time. Don't wait to get better tools. Don't wait to find packaging. Don't wait for anything. Just get out there and get started and then solve your problems slowly over time. This is an iterative process. So speaking of iterative processes, make sure you subscribe down below and hit the bell so that you can see our iterative process over time. So thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one. So if you wanna see our business journey since the beginning, click here. If you wanna use some of the tips and tricks that we learned to maybe start your own business, click here.